Hey there, I'm Nevin from Look Back, and I'm here to tell you that remote works if you're willing to pay the price. Um, and this is not a story of how rem remote could work for everyone or like a generic way for any company to work efficiently. This is just a story of how we do remote and how that works. Uh, and we're also a pretty young company, we're just about two years and 12 people, so larger organizations will of course have other problems than we do. I've uh, stolen this presentation from our CEO, Jonathan Litke, and he has used his background from starting Gozo Gamers from two to two million uh, viewers, uh, while well, I've replaced that with my background from Spotify, where I worked for four years. Um, so let me tell you about remote. So remote works, but technology obviously doesn't. Um, for me, uh, remote is all about uh, symmetrical um, communication bandwidth. And I'll explain what I mean by that. But I grew up, so to say, at a company that was designed for having a great engineering team working together very closely, talking very, um, very much in one office. And that worked great until the company became so big that it opened another office and then opened another office in another time zone across an Atlantic Ocean. And that became a lot more difficult because that office as well had the same recruitment strategy of getting excellent engineers and then working in teams at offices like normal. Um, and with these time zones, people started feeling left out and decisions, including more than one time zone became almost impossible. Um, and one solution was to try to kind of like isolate projects in time zones and offices, but that just created even bigger silos and more silence and less communication between teams. And my theory of why that never really worked, at least in the beginning at Spotify, was because um, face-to-face -face communication is a very high bandwidth communication method. You, you're talking is you very you can very easily communicate your ideas by speaking, and all the nonverbal communication on top of that. There's so much talking, um, but then if you have two big groups of people, and the only communication between those two are this weak, low bandwidth uh, channel of like IRC or mail threads. Um, you will lose 99% of the information, or that information will arrive so slowly that it's no longer useful anyway. So even if you have like people dedicated to facilitate communication between these offices, it's, it's going to be a pain and you're not going to be able to communi communicate uh, in a way so that these teams can work together, in my experience. Um, so the lesson that I took from my experience, and then Jonathan took from his experience with Gosa Gamers and Spotify. Um, and then we then used to implement our teams at Lookback, is that everybody needs to pay the price of remote equally. And by making it equally painful for everyone, uh, which is kind of a bad way of putting it, but I'll get to the details, everyone will be working to make communication great because everyone has these pain points. Everyone's working all the time to make this great. And there is no asymmetry in, um, asymmetry in communication. Everyone's on the same level, and everyone's on the same page. And that does sound painful, but and I'm just going to go through some of the benefits. Everyone uh, has probably knows or can imagine the benefit of working remotely, but for example, everyone can work wherever they're most comfortable, which is such a stress relief like you wouldn't believe. It's a great uh, boost for creativity and reducing um, and focus. Um, but a, a bit more surprising is that um, you increase transparency throughout the organization because everyone needs to leave these digital traces of what they do which means that it's very easy to just look into a chat channel or a forum and just see what's going on in any part of the organization. So you get great, great tr transparency for free. 
And you also get great uh, trans uh, flexibility both in what you work with and when you do it. If you have people all, all over the world in different time zones, we have uh, the US West Coast, uh, Sweden, Poland, Australia, so it's a big coverage of time zones. That means that everyone's adjusting their work uh, to be asynchronous. So you really can work at any time because no one is expecting you to be at a time at a specific place. And that also means that since everyone's working in this very transparent manner, it's very easy to skip between groups. There's no physical location you need to change. You just say, I'm more interested in this now and I'll just keep track of this thing. Um, so these gains and many others come from setting up rules for ourselves. Always relentlessly following these rules and always reminding each other to follow these rules. This is what company culture is. It's not something that just comes into being or just exists. It's something that you really need to work very hard for. Uh, it's our primary recruitment criterion that people are great at communicating and working in teams. And if you want to build something together, it's really the only thing that matters. So from our two years of trying to get a grip of working with people from all over the place, uh, we've sort of gathered seven semi-principles, uh, which I'll try to summarize like this. First of all, be asynchronous. As I said before, never rely on people to be at specific places at specific times, but post and wait for a response, or do something else while you wait for a response. And if you have a deadline, be very verbose about when you would like people to get back to you. Be threaded. Use the right tool for your communication. Make sure to find the right thread. Um, go through the history of communication, link between discussions. Make sure that um, you're always referring to the right place when you're posting information. Be transparent, and this is of course important in any organization, but extra so when you're remote. Document the decisions you make, and document the journey that you've taken coming to that, those decisions, um, and share your learnings. Fourth, be traceable. So I guess in this room there are a lot of developers who like to just open their laptops in the morning, hack away, close the laptop when you're done in the evening. Uh, but in a remote organization, no one can see that you're at the office. You need to really tell everyone that you're there, you're doing well, or not, and you're doing these things today, and you're running into these things, and you really need to be traceable and show where you are and what you're doing. Uh, fifth, be talkative. Not just traceable, but talk a lot. Opt to rather give more information rather than less. Don't be a Unix process. Don't be like, no output means I've got it and everything went great. <laughs> uh, reply to a thread saying, okay, I understand this, rather than just assuming that everyone has read it and are okay with whatever has been said. But, and this is difficult to balance, be to the point, because if everyone's spamming stuff all the time into the wrong channels, um, the real information is going to get lost. So make sure that your communication is in the right place and that you're being verbose but not too verbose. And finally, be targeted. Just like the time one, you need, you need to be uh, very clear when you need a response but also from who you need a response and who should read the thing you just posted. Um, so those principles have taken us pretty far. Um, we're working pretty well, I think, really well, following basically these uh, seven principles with our tools. So I thought I'd go through, like technically, what are we using to do our remote communication with our team of 12 people? So we're using not email. Email is terrible and the worst and kills puppies. Um, however, we use Trello, which I guess a lot of people here are doing. Uh, they replace whiteboards and Kanban post-its with a nice digital tool. And to get back to the point of 
physical whiteboards being nice. Yes, but if you're remote, you need to use the digital tool. And when everyone's forced to use the digital tool, you realize all the benefits of doing so. Trello is an amazing tool. It's so polished. It auto-updates. It's got all the right features. Um, and back at Spotify, long ago, while Spotify was trying to figure this remote thing out, it was trying to use Jira as a Kanban or um, Agile tool, which is terrible. Because you said, you, you, in Jira, you set up these processes of like these cards of these types can be moved between these columns under these circumstances, and it's just... Uh, instead, uh, in Trello, you just mash cards onto the board, and you just try to communicate what you're doing and what your team are doing and what might happen in the near future. And as long as that is communicated by the board, you're fine. And you don't need rules, you just try to keep it good. And I guess everyone has used, used Trello or Agile methods. One of the most important questions is, which uh, columns are you using? Uh, so I, j I just thought I I'd show you what we kind of settled on. It just happened to be these columns that we ended up with, which is the short-term backlog, but like maybe a month into the future to do this week. So we tried to do, by, uh, do things weekly. Uh, working on, which is happening right now. Yeah, I'm still not done with that release. Uh, there is needs review stuff that's done, but someone else should have a look at it, maybe test it or have a look at a PR or something like that, and then done once you've shipped it. And then every Friday we clear it done, and we every Monday we make sure to do this week is good for that week. No, so it's per team. So this is the uh, team improve UX for testers. And then you can assign, people are assigned to the cards they're currently working on. Obviously, that cannot be too, involve too many people. You have to have sort of a reasonable... Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So when we became 12 people relatively recently, um, we kind of changed how we worked because we realized the company is too big to ev gather everyone in one board and one communication channel. So we broke it down by goals, uh, which I found, found was a really interesting way of dividing a company. Instead of creating very static te teams of people with leaders, people who are interested in goals, join goals, and then try to fulfill those goals with milestones. And so this is one of the teams where we're interested in the UX for the people who are being recorded. If you know, look back there, testers are those that actually use the product. Um, I'm sure one could do a whole talk separately on that, but I find that a very interesting way of dividing a company without necessarily having leaders or static teams, which we're trying out just recently. Uh, so moving on, we're using a cool tool called uh, Squiggle, where it's kind of emulating the office feel. This tool takes a screenshot of everyone once every minute. And you can kind of see who's here, what mood are they in. He is probably coding very, very intently as he usually does. Um, and it's a crappy web app, but the value it's giving to us is so great that we couldn't really live without it. It's a great tool for feeling feeling like a, a team, like, like a family, even though you're all over the world. So we love it. It can also do video chat very badly, but we still use it because <laughs> it's so convenient. We use GitHub extensively. You all like know GitHub, but we're using it in one kind of interesting way where uh, we're using GitHub issues as a forum. So GitHub has great like markup support. It's got no mentions, code highlighting, uh, notifications, uh, animated GIFs, uh, emojis, push notifications, references to issues, to code, to whatever. It's a great forum tool. It's totally not built for it, but it works so good. Uh, so we're using it for the long form communication when you're writing like three pages about the design spec of something uh, where a chat maybe isn't very appropriate and Trello is a bit too temporary where you want to really have a discussion. Heidi, coworker. Like super quick, you 
Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember if there are any forum threads that we really shouldn't be showing. Yeah. <laughs> I think there probably are. Oh yeah, it's just it's just a list of issues, and but then you need to sort it by recently updated, or you will miss stuff, uh, so, which GitHub doesn't save. So you need to have a link to that. Um, I would love to show you, but I haven't really prepared it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we should, but we don't. So the question was whether we integrate GitHub with Trello. I mean, we link between them, but there is no. Yeah, and I know there is some kind of automatic thing you can do with closing issues from cards or something like that. We don't use it. Probably should. Yeah, from my experience, like closing issues from, from, from Git coming is very interesting because you get all the history of the project inside GitHub or Bitbucket. And just because of that, especially if you use like e aggregate or you're using GitChat, and every commit and every issue is open on Twitter are reported. Yeah. And I, I've been working at Fantasy Interactive before, and we had uh, offices all around the world, so it was very important for us to get one channel where every decision was right. uh, a centralized uh, thread. Yeah, so we, um, we use a tool called Flowdoc, which I will get to. Uh, no, it's fine. Where like all the tools fit into that, so we get all the issues, all the cards, everything that's happening comes into uh, inboxes, and they're called in uh, Flowdoc. So we, where if you like mention someone in a comment on GitHub, it's gonna ping you both on GitHub and on chat, so you can have the discussion where it's most appropriate. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that gets us to Flowdoc. Uh, so there are tons of inter. In company chat tools like Slack, Basecamp, HipChat, Yammer, whatever, they're all great. They don't have threads. Uh, this is a crappy web app with terrible UX, but it has threads within channels, which is something I've wanted since like IRC in the 90s. Uh, so you see, like, there's like a red icon over here, which means that that message and these two here are in a thread about people wearing hoodies on Squiggle. And then this thread in pink here is about uh, Pirate Bay uh, re-emerging. And then this green thread here is about me talking to myself to you right now uh, in the channel random. So these things are all going on in random. And then here in the sidebar I can uh, post to the thread and here I post to the whole chat. It's terrible UX but it's so powerful. Like it's so much easier to communicate about many things at once, which you tend to do when chat is your primary way of communicating. So I've heard Slack will have support for threads sometime and we'll probably move to it because Slack is awesome, but Flowdoc will have to do until then. And we use Screen Hero a lot. It's just another screen sharing tool, but it actually works, so that's nice. And you can like see the other person's cursor, so you have a cursor each. They were bought by Slack, by the way. There you go. Wired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that'll work out. Um, right, and then of course we dog for our own tool. I've done. I've talked about look back so many times here, but for those of you who don't know what it is, it records the screen on on iOS and then automatically uploads it to our web server. So you get a link that you can share. And we use it to dog food our own tool. And I heard of um, uh, other companies like Narrative use it as a great remote working tool where you record uh, videos of like bugs, animation, design, uh, UX, and you know any kind of app feedback. You just record that, you get a link, you share it to your colleagues. Uh, and for the same thing on Mac, we use QuickCast. Um, and it's just so useful to communicate about these things with video. So that's look back and that's quick cast. And here I'm just going through the code base quickly, record it for three minutes, and then that's a reference for some other dev when I'm too lazy to write documentation, but I've got three minutes to record a video. Very, very powerful. And I just store this in a wiki or whatever. Um, right, so I also want to talk about two ways of measuring communication to help you choose 
how to talk to your colleagues. Uh, so I talked about bandwidth, which is very important to me, where you can choose a tool depending on the amount of bandwidth you feel you need to consume to uh, communicate to your colleagues. So chat can be answered at any time, throw away data. If they're around, they'll answer, that's fine. Uh, post on the forum, still text, then you got like screen, he screen hero and squiggle where you got video and you're really taking up the person's attention, but you're also able to communicate in a much more verbose manner. So like if you're just asking what, what's the end point we're using for the beta right now, you're just asking in the chat and answer, someone will answer when they're ready. <clears throat> if you're designing a fresh new API and you really need to sit down and really do some deep discussion, maybe you book a flight a meet in real life, uh, depending on what you need. Another way to measure it is communicative uh, persistence, which is how long is this going to be stored? <coughs> We're talking. This is information that might not be uh, necessary in the future, so you just uh, talk via voice. Or even chat is very temporary. We never expect anyone to read all the scroll back when they've been asleep since they were in the wrong uh, time zone. But rather, text in Flowdoc is throwaway, while text in the forum, everybody needs to read, at least if they've been pinged uh, with a mention that they should read it. Um, so that's also an important aspect to think about when communicating, we've found. And so basically, we found that for us, working like this, with the team members we have in the company at the size we're at right now, remote really works. And the key thing, the thing that we feel is to take away and should, is probably applicable to other companies is that you all need to be all in or it's not going to work. Um, thank you. And if we have time for questions? Yeah, so uh, I think we, we just uh, ran through the schedule, but we still have time on the original schedule, <laughs> this one is the questions. Yeah, so did you connect uh, with Trello to Flowdoc? Anyhow, because we haven't managed to do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so in Flowdoc, I can probably show random without people doing stupid things. Uh, so in... Um, you got these inboxes. So this is not part of the chat flow per se, but it's like a sidebar, which is really weird, but kind of works. So you can set up sources here uh, from, oh, that's an API token, thank you. <laughs> With where you said just, you connect your Trello or you connect your GitHub or whatever, and that's gonna show up there. You say, you want, I want this repos issues in here yeah. and stuff like that. Because Right. Um, but at the moment we have them, you know, duplicates from the thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it sounds like you haven't connected them the way I wanted to work, you know, in my head. Right. Uh, no, I, that, that's that been a source of contention whether stuff should be only in GitHub, only in Trello, or both. And the way we're currently working is that if it's an issue, keep it in GitHub and keep information about the issue in GitHub. Uh, and then Trello is about what you're currently working on. So you don't necessarily post technical details in Trello, but you just have the card referencing the issue to show that I'm currently working on it. And like stuff like collaboration things, you put that in Trello. Yeah. Anything else? So the question is, of course, this is a project. But if you have a client, how would you work with our workflow? And I think I would use Trello. Like give them access either to the board where you're working or a <laughs> separate board. Yes. Uh, and then keep the communication there. Because you got mentions, you got updates, and you can keep track of just what's going on. And I think, uh, yeah, it's a great tool for, you know, middle bandwidth and middle persistence. Uh, well, for most, like process things and communication things. So I would use Trello for that. But I, I've never had a client like that, so I don't know. Yeah. All right. That's it, and thank you again. <laughs>